Today I'm going to talk about winterizing. We're in the time of year where your camper is going to start freezing. Um, people are always ask me, when should I winterize in, in the year? Well, number one, if um, I'm through with the unit, I'm not going to use it anymore, you can go ahead and winterize at any point because even if it's summer, you're not going to be using it. Winterize it, you're done with it. You don't have to worry about it. Number two, if it's starting to freeze outside and I'm worried about frozen on the water puddles, different things like this, it's time to go ahead and start winterizing your camper because you don't want to take a chance of those pipes or your hot water heater or your pump freezing. So today I'm going to cover some few points to help you winterize. Now, this is to help you and give you a guideline how to go by. Um, Pontiac RV res assumes no responsibility for frozen pipes if it's winterized wrong. If you have a question, if you have a problem, be sure to call us at our um, phone number um, and ask for service because uh, they can walk you through other steps in case you have a problem and you don't know something. But it's not a hard thing. I have a lot of people when I do walkthroughs, they let it overwhelm them. And they have this fear of everything bursting and everything um, coming apart on them. And it's not a, really a problem. All you're doing when you're winterizing is you're replacing the water that's in the water lines, the pump, uh, with an antifreeze solution made that won't freeze. Now, as far as a hot water heater, we drain it. But let me show you some things you're going to need. Some of the things you're going to need to winterize. Number one, I'm going to need a screwdriver or a square head bit on my drill. And the reason that is, a lot of times there's a panel that you have to remove to get to the back of the hot water heater or to get to drain sometimes. These can be purchased at a, a Walmart or Kmart if you don't have a square head drew, uh, drill or a screwdriver or give us a call. Number two, you're going to need a socket and a ratchet. Now, depending on the type of hot water heater that you have, this over here I have on this trailer is an Atwood. And Atwood takes an inch, it takes a 7 8 socket, which I have here, and Atwood will have a nylon plug in it. If it's a suburban hot water heater, I will take an inch and a 16th socket because it has a larger plug and has an anode rod in it. Now, you'll find, and also what I'm going to need, I'm going to need at least two gallons of antifreeze, and at times I will need a, a hose with a fitting on it. Now, depending on the camper, if I need that hose and that fitting. Some campers such as this one have a hose and a winterizing kit. A lot of them don't. And I'll show you inside where that hooks. Now, when it comes to the a hot water heater, basically what I want to do to start my winterizing is I do several things before I ever go in to start pumping out the, uh, the water and the antifreeze into it. Number one, I drain my tank. Underneath this is a fitting a plastic that you can turn. Some of them have a little metal knob. Some of them have a plug you take out. Doesn't matter what kind it is, you always open that up and drain your fresh water tank. Now, while my fresh water tank's draining, I want to drain my hot water heater because I want it empty. When I'm going to winterize my hot water heater, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain it. When it's empty, it won't freeze. So, my plug is always here. Unless it's a suburban hot water heater, it's in the middle. Remember, the suburban takes the larger socket. I take my socket on my ratchet, I reach it up in here, I put it on here, put my ratchet on here, turn the plug, let it come out. Now when it starts to come out, it's going to bubble. It's going to just glug, I guess you could call it, because there's no air getting in. At this point, I'm going to stand back so I don't get soaked. I'm going to open the pop-off valve is, and the water will shoot out. Now once that hot water heater is drained, it's done. You don't put antifreeze into it. It wastes six gallons of antifreeze, and it also could put a taste in your tank that you don't need. So when that plugs out and that's a drain, pop the lid, uh, pop off back down, you're done with it. Take your plug, put it right there, shut your hot water heater, and it's finished for the winter. Okay, well, I'm around the inside now. Um, at this point, I will either take my screwdriver or I'll take my drill gun, and I have a square head screw that's normally in here, and I'll take that out. I'll take the panels out of the way, and back in here I have my pump. My pump's back in here, and my hot water heater, having removed this one, is back on this side. Now, what I first want to do is, now that I've drained my hot water heater, I want to bypass my hot water heater. There's two types of bypasses, generally, on a hot water heater. There's one that this one has, which is three valves. There's an upper valve, a middle valve, and a lower valve. What you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to shut off this valve, shut off this valve, and turn on that valve. The reason being is, the antifreeze comes up, cannot go into the hot water heater, so it bypasses. So therefore, no antifreeze is going into that hot water heater, which saves the hot water heater. 
Now, some hot water heaters have one valve. If there's only one valve, it'll be at the bottom, and all you have to do is turn that valve where it points up. When it points up, it's pointing up at the bypass, and it takes care of it for yourself. That's all you have to do on that one. So there's two types. Generally, there might be three, but generally, on the, especially the campers 15 years and newer, there's, there's only two types of valves. The next thing you're going to want to do is this. You're going to want to suck the antifreeze into the water lines. Now, this, by the way, has a uh, winterizing kit on it. I showed you this one, so I can, and then I explained the other kind. But right back there is a valve that comes from the fresh water tank. I'm going to shut that valve so my pump doesn't suck out of the tank. I'm going to open that valve right there. And when I do that, I take this hose and I stick it in that gallon of antifreeze. Now that's just RV antifreeze. You can purchase that here. You can purchase it at Walmart, Kmart, and a lot of stores carry RV antifreeze. So when I've got it in the hose, um, I turn my pump on, and then I go through my camper turning on hot water faucet till it turns red, cold water faucet till it turns red. I make sure I do my outside shower, and if I have low point drains. Now, before I go farther, I'm going to tell you about the kind that doesn't have this. Some of them don't have this drain system, and it's just connected into the pump. What I would do then is, I would disconnect that fitting right there, unscrew it, and I would have myself a fitting of my own with a hose that I can screw onto that. Now, there are also some campers that have a hose clamp here that I tell people all you need is a hose. Take the hose clamp off, stick your hose on there, but I need some way to suck in the antifreeze. It's not complicated. So I want some, place, some way for that pump to suck antifreeze through the water system. Now, I also have in this camper... They're up in here and you really can't see them, but it has low point drain pulls that are up in here, hot and cold. They're little knobs that you pull up. Some of them have them in the campers, and I find out where they are by looking under the camper and you'll see two lines hanging down. Some of them have caps on them. I'll take the caps off and, and antifreeze will come out those too. Not all of them have low points, but a lot of them do. So you want to make sure you get your low point drains and you want to make sure you get your outside shower because there's water in those too. Now, once I pump the water, I have all my faucets have turned red, my toilet has turned red, and my outside shower has turned red. Basically, I'm done. I've drained my fresh water tank, I've drained my hot water heater, and I've got antifreeze through all the lines. But there's one more place I'm going to show you that a lot of people fail to hit, and that's on the outside. I want to make sure also that your black and your gray water tank are empty. Now, my black and gray water tank are down here. Uh, make sure my pools are empty, and a lot of people I tell, a lot of people... I had a person tell me one time that they, um, they put their cap on, but they opened their drains. Well, that leaves water still inside here. What I generally do is leave my cap off, shut my drains, and just open them a crack. Shut my other drain, open it just a crack. And then that way, if any water gets in my tank, it can seep out. I don't want to leave them open because I don't want an animal crawling up in there if I'm out in the country especially and making a nest or something like that. You don't want that. So, but one other point I want to cover also is I mentioned your outside shower, making sure water antifreeze comes out that. But I want to cover this, this here at the, um, the freshwater inlet. I pull this screen aside, and there's a little white peg inside there. Some of them are white, some of them are black. You want to make sure you get antifreeze out this too. It's usually a tube between 3 and 7 or 10 inches long coming from your inside water lines. And if that's got water in it, it's going to freeze. So I tell people this. I shut my pump off, a little, little pressure off, then I just come out here, push in on this little valve, water will come out on my hand, but it'll start, it'll be antifreeze almost right away. That way I cover that tube, because you don't want that freezing. This is generally about all you really need to know about winterizing. Um, you've got some units, some bigger motor homes that have washing machines and dryers. You've got some units that have got um, ice makers in their freezers and things like this. Now when it comes to those, I believe it's best to have it done even if you watch them do it because basically on a washing machine you're going to run it till water comes in, you're going to pump it out, but it's nice to be shown how to do this so you do it right because it's really rough when you crack a, a pump in a very expensive washing machine. It's also nice to be shown how to do the uh, ice maker because it's not hard but unless you see it and see it done it gets kind of difficult and you don't want to crack a line in that. Now these are all put together we put this together to help you. Remember, if you have a question, if you don't know, or if you have a problem, give us a call. We assume no responsibility for water lines breaking, um, and if, if it's not done right. If it's not done for us, we're not, we don't assume responsibility for it. But a lot of people would like to know how to winterize, and like I said, it's not a hard thing to do. It just needs to be done.